Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's important video, we are going to see and solve two important interview scenarios that were asked in general mills. And one was to get a top two subcategories for each category. And this was asked to solve in both the Tableau and SQL level. So here the employer is or the interviewer is trying to test your Tableau knowledge as well as your SQL knowledge, two things. Second question is last three months sales. Again, we'll, we are going to see multiple approach for this. So stay tuned. So let us get started without wasting much time. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So here I want to get the top two subcategory items for each category. And we need to solve this in both, like we know. So I'm going to take or build my view accordingly. And I'm going to take category and subcategory. And I'm just taking my sales as my measure. So if you see here and observe for furniture, I've got bookcases, chairs and all. So I'm going to sort it for now. So for furniture, chairs and tables are my top two items, right? Similarly, for office supplies, I've got the storage and binders as my top two items. Same for technology, phones and machines are my top two items. Now pause the video here and comment in the comment section what is the approach you think would be apt. Okay, so I'm just going to create a simple calculation called as rank to compute the values here. I want to find out what is the value of each of the sales with respect to my subcategory. So I'm going to rank it as a rank function. And I'm going to use rank unique here. And I'm going to call some of my sales. And I want to sort them descending. Let us see what is the result it is giving us. I'm just going to click on apply. And I just want to convert this into dimension so that, you know, We are not. Uh... So if you observe now here, it is giving us rank from one till 70. But that is not our intention here. So for each of my category, I want my ranks to start from one, right? So now we need to use a table calculations to tell Tableau how to compute. So I'm just going to click on that. Compute using subcategory and going to click. So now if you observe for furniture category, I've got ranks from one till four. And for office supplies, I've got ranks from one till nine. And technology, I've got one till four. So till here, we are good. Now from this, we need to get only top two ranks, right? So how are we going to? solve this. I'm going to edit our calculation. And if I say, if I write less than or equal to two, then we'll get for each thing here. This two is becoming true here. This two are becoming true. These two are becoming true. That way I can write and I can take this and drop it on filter shelf. And if I take true, we are getting top two items for each category here. So likewise, we are going to solve the same thing in SQL, okay? So, but for that, I have my table called as employee table. And in this employee table, I want the top two employees with respect to each department, okay? Top two employees for each department I need. So to get that, what I'm doing is I'm taking my three columns, department name, department number, sorry, and employee name and a salary so that we know what are this. So this is what we have, but I want to sort them so that, you know, we know what are they. So I'm just trying to sort it by department number. So if you observe now, we have department from 10 to 20, but here still our order salary is not sorted. I want my salary to be sorted in descending. So I'm writing salary in descending and I'm just executing them together. 
Now, if you observe for department number 10, we have got three employees, King, Clark, and Miller, and their salaries respectively in sorted order. Now, according to this, we need top two employees. So I should get King and Clark in department 10, and I should get Ford and Scott, two employees, because they have got same salaries. And similarly, in department 30, I should get Blake and Allen. These two employees I should get. Now, what am I going to do? I'm just trying to find out a rank function here so that you know we know what is the rank for each of this. So I'm going to use a rank over function here and I'm doing a partition by department number here because for every department number, we want to find out the rank here, okay? And I'm arranging or sorting my salary in descending. Let us, do, let us see what is the result it is giving. So I'm just executing this. So I'm getting rank for each of my department here. Remember, we have given partition by department number here. That is by it is restarting every department. Okay, that point we need to keep in mind. Now, I can use rank function or I can use dense rank based on how you are getting values here. Your rank might change here. Now, observe here in this case, for department number 20, we have got salary 3000 which is repeating for spot also but if you observe the next rank that it has given is three which means because it is already repeating twice here second rank it has eliminated and it is giving us the next number of three but if i am using dense rank see the difference here this difference we need to observe remember and implement it accordingly now in this if you observe here rank, even though rank is repeating, it is not skipping the rank. It is giving us second rank only. Or if I give row number, what will happen now? I'm just giving row number. The syntax will remain same. Only different functions I'm trying to use here. I'm just going to run this. So it is standardly giving us a row number for each department. So in department 10, I've got three employees. In department 20, I've got five employees. And in department 30, I've got six employees. So simply, if I take less than or equal to two in an outer query, I should get this, okay? So you can use rank function or you can use row number to get the desired result because here we are already sorting our result by salary in a descending manner. So our row number that is getting generated is correct. Okay, that way we can do. Now, here what I'm doing is I'm trying to use uh, a dense rank maybe. And I'm calling this entire thing as A. And I'm calling, a, I'm writing an outer query, select star from this table, where rank, so this is my rank if you observe, less than or equal to two. So I write it. For each department, I'm getting two. But you, if you observe department 20, because rank is repeating two, two times, it is giving us those two. Now, this is a use case that you need to check with business how they want when both the values are matching. But according to condition, because they wanted top two ranks, we are displaying that. Okay. So same thing, if I go to Tableau here, because we have used rank function, it is working fine. That's okay. But we can also use row number function here. So instead of, uh, I'm just going to cre create this. And if I try to write index here, let us see how the index number is getting generated here. So I'm not going to use this. And I'm just going to call my index. And I'm just making it discrete. Now observe here, index number is getting generated. One, two, four, five, six. But I want, again, I want to restart my index number for every category. Same, go, go to your compute using. And I can use this now. See here, my index number is restarting every for every category. Again, I can go here and I, I can apply a similar for a filter or a condition where I can say index less than or equal to two, or uh, then it should work here less than or equal to two. 
only first two are becoming a true in every case. So this way also I can do. Or I can do, like say, index in function I can use one comma two. Uh, I think here index is yeah, index might not work. So that way also we can do here. Okay, so I hope this is clear. We can solve this in multiple ways. We can either use index functions or we can use a rank function. So let us see second question here. Now give last three months of sale per month. I mean, I mean based on month. That is how I got the question here. And I'm going to take my order date to see what is the data that we have. So we have a data from 2018 till 2021. Just to get the latest data or till the current year data, what I'm going to do is I'm trying to write a calculation or uh, create a new calculated field for less current year. And I'm using date add function. And I want to add two years to my order date so that it becomes 2023. Okay, so that is the intention here. So this is just for mock-up purpose. In assuming in real time, we will have the data that we need and I'm going to convert my date to date, not date and time. I'm just dropping it here. Simple. Now we got this. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to just duplicate this to get in month format also. Now for 2020, we have got this, this, and this. Fine. Now let us write calculated field last three months sales. Okay. So I'm going to simply use date difference function. Okay. The date difference of what we want last three months. So what is the date part they are talking about? They are talking about the month part. So I'm going to specify a month here. Okay. Of which date? So don't get confused and give different dates. What is the date that we have created? We have created date called as current date, current year, and order date. Sorry, of and today. So basing on today, we are going to find out what is the difference in months we have. Okay, let us see what is the result it will give first, and then we will try to optimize our calculation. Okay, and I'm going to just uh, take, maybe I'll just convert this into dimension and if I try to add it here. So observe how the months are getting generated here. So maximum month we have got is 41 and if I go to 23 and in June, you see it is 0, 1, 2, 3. So from here it is starting and because we have data greater than zero or greater than June, it is giving values in negative. Okay, now we can write condition here in multiple ways. Like I can write it uh, greater than, less than or equal to uh, three if I write, okay, maybe two. Okay, and because I don't want negative values, I'm just going to write it something like this. Okay, and this should be greater than zero. If I click on apply, you see only June. Okay. Now June is becoming true, which is our current month. May is becoming true, which is our current month. April is becoming true, which is like say zero, one, two. So last three months we are getting from this. Suppose if I don't write this, let us see what will be the result. This is how you need to practice, see what how each condition is behaving and you will write a better code every day. Now if I write like this, you know, anything that is less than two is becoming true. So here if you remember, July, August, September are have values which are in negative, right? So we didn't write condition to eliminate that. That is why that is becoming true. So to eliminate that, I am writing like this. This is our first approach where I'm telling I want values greater than zero. I mean here, date difference, it will calculate and it will give only those. If I try to apply, I got only those. That is one thing. 
Our second approach is, I'm just going to remove this. Here I'm going to use in function and I'm going to write zero, one and two, close it. Click on apply, see, it is still working. So if I want last four months, I can do it like this also. So different approaches you can try and you can try to uh, do or solve this type of you know, uh, problems in real time as well. This is one of the most uh, commonly used real time scenario. Try to practice it and remember how we are doing. Maybe in project, you can try different approaches, what is suiting to you according to your database, you according to your data source, and you can try to implement. Okay, I hope my video helped you. If it does, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's it from my side. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and have a good day.